Hi, welcome back to ASEAN News with me, Vanessa. Our British pilot Stephen Cameron expresses his gratitude to Vietnam doctors after leaving the hospital. Come on, Vietnam. <laughs> Stephen Cameron, a pilot for national carrier Vietnam Airlines, became a sensation in Vietnam. Speaking in Vietnamese, Cameron says thank you as he left the hospital, flanked by doctors who treated him. He arrived in the Southeast Asian country from Britain, hospitalized three days after his first flight from Vietnam Airlines following a visit to a bar in Ho Chi Minh City that became linked to a cluster of coronavirus cases. Cameroon's illness and the highly public efforts of Vietnam doctors to save him become a symbol in Vietnam of the country's successful fight against the virus. The state media says Vietnam spent over $200,000 treating him. Vietnamese doctors will accompany Cameroon on the special flight back to Britain. A British pilot in Vietnam stricken with COVID-19 and he recovers to be discharged from hospital and fly back home. The case of Stephen Cameron has attracted national attention in Vietnam, where a combination of target testing and aggressive quarantine has skipped its coronavirus. He is one of 19 people who visited a bar in Ho Chi Minh City, a cluster of coronavirus cases discovered and initially identified as patient 91. I've seen many things before um, I've been overwhelmed by the um, by the, the generosity of the Vietnamese people, yeah. the dedication and professionalism of the doctors and nurses, both here at the um, Chow Ray and at the uh, Disease Hospital. Really? The odds say that I shouldn't be here, so I can only thank everybody here for yeah. doing what they've done. Uh, and I, go, I go, go home with a happy heart because I'm going home, yeah. but with a sad one because I'm leaving so many people here that I've made friends with. Yeah. So. Um, Thank you again. Are you ready? 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 On to people as a medical student. I'm still a pilot, just my, my license is lapsed, that's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cameron was on a ventilator and life support machine at Ho Chi Minh City Hospital of Tropical Diseases. Medical officials say that the disease reduced his lung capacity to 10% and that he urgently needed a lung transplant. According to the state media, Cameroon regained consciousness after his condition began to improve. He takes off life support and soon no longer requires assistance from a ventilator to breathe. He will fly to Hanoi, then continue on to Frankfurt, Germany, before reaching home in the UK. Thailand denies monkey labor using coconut harvesting. The Deputy Agriculture Minister says Thailand insisted it does not use monkeys to collect coconuts on an industrial scale. After British retailers announce bans on products which campaigners say use the animals in their production. We insist that there is no animal abuse. It will not be fair at all to the coconut farmers of over 200,000 households who will be impacted due to the miscommunication on this issue. In the industrial level, we use machines and diverse production system were under the European Retailers Protocol for Good Agriculture Practice. It prohibits companies from abusing animals. However, we still have the people's way of life with the monkeys, which is a different thing. The coconuts that the monkeys collect are not for export. They are just at the provincial level consumption. And even that, I don't suppose it will be enough. <laughs> Simon backed a call to supermarkets to stop selling Thailand coconut products over accusation of monkey slaves by the rights group People for Ethical Treatment of Animals, PETA, published in the Telegraph newspaper. PETA claims that all 13 facilities that they have investigated in Thailand were found to have abused the monkeys and they are urging the government to end the practice. 
facilities. So PETA's undercover investigation visited 13 facilities in Thailand and found monkey abuse at every single one of those facilities. So it is something that is widespread. The government of Thailand is seeming to kind of take both positions in that they're denying the use of monkeys, but they're also defending the use of monkeys and they can't have it both ways. What we're hoping the government will do is acknowledge that monkeys are being abused and make changes to the industry to fight that exploitation. Mm. The most heartbreaking part of what our investigation revealed was the loneliness. So we're hoping that they're going to make those changes, eliminate the use of monkeys in coconut picking, and instead rely on mechanized coconut picking as is done in other countries. Until that happens, we're calling on consumers to not buy coconut products from Thailand. If you see Thailand on the label of your coconut milk, coconut cream, or other coconut product, please leave it on the shelves and instead choose one that's produced in an Nation. White Rose, Coop, Boots and Okedo vowed not to sell products that used monkey labors. While Morrison's has already removed Thai products amid an appeal by Prime Minister Boris Johnson's fiancée Carrie Simons. Deputy Agriculture Minister Mananya Thai said told to the Reuters denying the accusations. Thailand has exported coconut milk worth 12.3 billion baht equal to $396 million, about 8% of it to Britain. The Singapore starting voting for general election. Polling stations in Singapore open at local time for the country's general election. The 2.65 million people were eligible to vote. In view of the prevailing COVID-19 situation, temperature screening to detect people with fever or respiratory symptoms at the polling stations to control of the COVID-19 epidemic and job security are the most concerned topics among the voters. The elections department has asked the voters to wear masks and keep social distancing at all time in the polling stations. The, I mean, most of us, um, it's probably the job security and the handling of the COVID-19 cases. Because I, through this COVID periods, we can see, I truly can see the the hard work of the governments, and really we are very blessed ones. A female voter said through this COVID-19 period, she truly can see the hard work of the government and really they are very blessed ones. The issues I'm most concerned with during this general election are on job security and job creation, and also support for self-employed individuals like me. A total of 191 candidates from 11 political parties and an independent candidate are competing for 93 seats in the general election. Singapore held election with coronavirus preventive measure. Singaporeans wearing masks and gloves cast their ballots under the cloud of COVID-19 pandemic that is pushing the city-state economy towards its worst ever recession, the focus of the election. Clad in face shields, election officials enforced safe distancing rules and took voters' temperatures as they enter polling booths. Nevertheless, some voters were still concerned about the risk of infection. Generally, I, I just feel that perhaps, uh, yeah, timing-wise, um, this, this could be at a later point in time, especially during this period. Yeah. Because it's our responsibility and... Uh, Last year we were not here, we were in India, so this time we made it sure we come and vote. Uh, the old precaution is very good. The government is doing good precaution to prevent the spreading of this virus. In power since independence in 1965, the ruling People's Action Party is expected to carry Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong to another comfortable and probably final victory. A record show 11 parties are contesting. Singapore is not the first country in Asia that the elections held during the pandemic. Meanwhile, South Korea held parliamentary elections in April, but its mandatory ballot comes under strict conditions. Police Samon Al Jazeera journalist over reports on migrant arrest amid outrage in Malaysia. Malaysian police summoned reporters and staff of news broadcaster Al Jazeera for questioning over a documentary on the country's arrest of undocumented migrants. Malaysian authority says the journalist lawyer Hishyam Tepu Teik says that his client refused the charges. To say that our client refused these charges and stand by their professionalism, quality and impartiality of the journalism. 
rights groups have raised concerns over crackdowns on media freedoms under Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yashin's government, as well as a rising anger toward foreigners who have been accused of spreading the coronavirus and burdening state resources. Malaysian Prime Minister insists speaker with Norwegian in crucial test of support. Malaysian Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yashin win a show of support in Parliament, with lawmakers narrowly backing his bid to replace the lower house speaker in a vote seen as bolstering his position. Mr. Speaker, I would like to propose for you, Mr. Speaker, Muhammad Arif MD Yusuf, to vacate your role on the basis that there is a new candidate for your position. Anwar Ibrahim, opposition leader, says he believes that Prime Minister can listen and answer to their debate before all members of Parliament can decide by voting. I believe that Prime Minister can listen and answer to our debate before all members of Parliament can decide by voting. This is a big decision in Malaysian history, so there is no reason for us to limit it to two people and such as limited time to decide something this big in our history. Southeast Asia's third largest economy has been grappling with political uncertainty since Muhyiddin, who was part of former Prime Minister Mahathir Muhammad's administration, was an unexpectedly made prime. This is the new normal introduced by the Prime Minister, where the Speaker of the House can be replaced even though there is no provision to do so except in the event of death. If that's the case, I also have a candidate to replace the Prime Minister. Muhammad Arif MD Yusuf, who was appointed by the previous administration, was backed by 111 lawmakers with 109 against. One member was absent and another abstained. Azar Azizan Harun, a former election commission chairman, chose the new speaker. Mahathir's push for a confidence vote on Muhyiddin's leadership when the lower house convened for only one day due to the coronavirus pandemic. Singapore Straight Time newspaper reports, Muhyiddin is preparing for a snap election by the end of the year to seek a firm mandate amid questions over his legislative influence. Thailand's government tightened regulations for the entry of foreigners. After two new imported coronavirus cases with possible exposure to the public raised concern about the second wave of infections. Thailand has been 15 days without confirmed local transmissions of the coronavirus, but two cases among foreigners has led to the self-isolation more than 400 people and fears on social media of new contagion. <laughs> The Sun family barely left condominium because the kid has been waiting to be admitted into the hospital. The manager of the condominium said that all the residents have their key card, so it lowers the risk of exposing to others. The only person that most likely in being in contact with the security guard, who's already getting a checkup and has stopped working for the moment. <laughs> Those isolated may have been exposed to a crewman of an Egyptian military plane in eastern Rayon province, a girl and a family member of a Sudanese diplomat in Bangkok. The mandatory 14-day state supervised quarantine required for returnees. Two schools are closed in Bangkok and at least 10 shot in Rayon province where the Egyptians had arrived. We have informed all students of school shut down via line application. All diplomats and family members who were previously allowed to self-isolate in the residence must now be quarantined under government supervision. Thailand's coronavirus daily more than 3,200 infections and 58 deaths. Bali has first center to return captive dolphins to the wild. Rainbow the dolphin was confined to a shallow chlorinate pool in Indonesia Hotel on the island of Bali, entertaining visitors from around the world by jumping through hoops. Well, it's very exciting. It's been 50 years in the making. Uh, it's the first dolphin sanctuary anywhere in the world. Um, and it's a model. It can be duplicated. And we're trying to do that in Europe as well, in Italy and in uh, Crete. So. There, there needs to be many small sanctuaries in places where dolphinariums have closed down and a compatible group of dolphins can go there to be evaluated for release back into the wild. The captivity industry, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. They don't want sanctuaries to happen. Sanctuaries make them look bad. 
because their dolphins are all in stadiums. And um, so you have to you have to get cooperation from the government for one thing. And we have that in Indonesia. With the help of Indonesian authorities, activists rescue four dolphins held at the Bali Hotel and bring them to the center in a bay on the tropical island for treatment and one died. Kalau di captive itu dari bahan kimia yang ditaruh di air seperti klorin, CTX, dan yang lain. Usually in captivity, the pool is filled with chemicals like chlorine and the quality of water is not good because it is not freshy water. The pool water is only changed every few days. When they are in captivity, they suffer from irritation on their skin and fins and their eyes are irritated. Now they are in the sea. It's much better for their skin. It heals them immediately. Di air laut, nggak ada yang namanya kimia atau chemical. Jadi mereka lebih bagus kulitnya, di healing langsung kalau misalnya mereka. Returning dolphins to the wild depends on their health and capability to catch prey and interact with other dolphins. And once we will relocate them to be released, they will go to the area where they were originally captured because we know where they were captured in uh, in central Java. So we, we aim to relocate them to their uh, area that they know, where they grew up, where yeah, it's, it's good if we could release them in their original habitat and we will provide them a GPS and on the location surely we have a facility ready where they can uh, climatize to the surroundings before we release them back to the ocean where they really belong. Agus Budi Santosa, head of Bali Natural Resources Conservation Agency, says the Bali government hopes to emulate the dolphin project to save other species so their children and grandchildren can appreciate the beauty of these animals. Protecting wildlife is the duty of government to make sure the next generation, our children and grandchildren, can appreciate the beauty of these animals. For Barry, who in the past trained dolphins used in the TV series Flipper before his change of heart, opening the sanctuary in Bali is another step on his goal to end captivity. When I started doing this 50 years ago, people thought I was crazy. Dolphin captivity issue? That's not an issue. And, and so it took like 25 years just to make it an issue. And I remember standing in front of the Miami Seacorium with a free the dolphin sign, people laughing at me. There was nobody else. There was no, no organization, no animal welfare organization working on this issue. It wasn't an issue. Today, it's a mainstream issue because of the COVID movie, Blackfish. Um, and there are more films coming out like this, Blood Dolphins. My son had a TV series called Blood Dolphins by DolphinProject.com for Animal Planet. So people become educated and they become activists. And there are hundreds of activists working on this issue now. I'm not alone anymore. According to a 2019 report by World Animal Protection, more than 3,000 dolphins were in captivity in 336 entertainment venues around the world as a part of an industry generating up to $5.5 billion annually. United States Army Chief of Staff James C. McConville met with Thailand Prime Minister Prayut Chang Ocha along with delegates in Bangkok. <coughs> United States Army Chief of Staff James C. McConville met with Thailand Prime Minister Prayut Chang Ocha along with delegates in Bangkok. McConville and his team arrived in Thailand for a two day trip to strengthen the relationship between the two countries. According to the press release from the Thailand government house, Prayut has acknowledged $2 million in funds from the US to help Thailand cope with the coronavirus and facilitate Thailand's returnees during the pandemic. The U.S. delegates were visiting Thailand under a special arrangement and must observe measures imposed by the country's Center for COVID-19 Situation Administration, which allows delegates not to be quarantined, but they must wear face masks during their visits. Well, thank you for today. Have a nice weekend. We'll see you soon.